In the air, son. Oh, hi. Hi. Is he evening paper? Oh, thank you. Uh, want the sport page? No, thanks. Did you work today? Uh, no, I uh, talked to a couple of truckers, though. There's not much doing it. Mm. I brought some stuff home. Well, how about having a hamburger out tonight? Huh? Oh, uh, I can't. I got a date. Julie Walsh? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, how can you drink that stuff? That's sunshine locked in the golden grain. Just like taking a sundown. Yeah, and you're a little sunburned. That's life's fever burning very bright. <laughs> How's Mike Walsh these days? I don't know. Since he's got that big building deal, I hardly ever see him. Yep. He's liable to make a lot of money, Pop. Eddie, you know something? Mm. Julie Walsh is a very lucky girl. What? Oh, well, no, look at yourself. <laughs> Come on, Pop. No, it's reality. Don't be afraid of it. You're a very special human being. A very special grocery clerk. Never be ashamed of what you are, never. I'm not ashamed. I'm Pat Quaid's bouncing boy, and I own the world, right? Well, well maybe, maybe you don't own it. I sure didn't give or take too much out of it. I... But we don't need the world, and that's just as good as owning it. Yeah, we're going to beat him, aren't we, Pop? Yeah, sure. Where are you going tonight? Dancing. Dancing. It's been years, long years. Your mother, of course, I always had two left feet. Your mother, bless her, she was a wonderful dancer. She was beautiful. Pop, half the treasury. Five for you and five for me. No, I just... Uh, thanks. It's okay, Pop. I gotta hurry. I'll be late. Let's have a night class no, right Daddy. now. Yes, and we'll study the stars. I know, but my problem is English literature. Well, it's simple. I shall recite you a poem. Oh, I like that. You have such feeling in your voice when you want to be serious. The word is romantic. I love you, Julie. I know, but I've still got to go in. Good night, Pat. This week, but he's got a lot of things coming up very soon. How are you doing at that supermarket? Oh, fine, just fine. Here, Eddie. Thank you. We went dancing. You date other girls? No, Julie's my girl. What's in the future? I don't know. Don't you think about it? Oh, sure. Oh, you mean about, uh, about getting married? Exactly. Are you afraid we're going to elope or something? I'm concerned for Julie. So am I. Eddie, I'm going to level with you. I don't think you're right for Julie. Dad, please. Wait a minute, Julie, wait a minute. Why? Because I didn't go to college? 
You got no future. What makes you so sure? The police called here a half an hour ago about your father. Your father's in jail. He got 20 days for busting up Madden's Tavern. Eddie, do you feed him whiskey money? I would dish it out to him on a spoon if he wanted me to. He's my father. He's a heartbroken man, a lonely man. I don't look down on him. I'm proud of him. You pride. You quades are lousy with pride. What do you got to be proud of? Your old man's just a sorry, boozing slob. And you'll be wasting the best years of your life picking him up out of the gutter. And that's not for my Julie. Do you agree with him? Eddie, please. Well, do you? He's my father. Well, he was just talking about my father. Hello, Eddie. How is he? he? Just missed being a hospital case. Took on a guy half his age and twice his size. What's the idea of blabbing to Mike Walsh? Must have been Sergeant Kane trying to locate you. Did you rough him up? No. I was in a gentle mood. You going to spring your old man? How much is it? 25 bucks. Well, I suppose 20 days won't kill Pat Quaid. That's what you suppose. I'll get him out somehow. Somehow. Eddie, come here. Somehow is a dirty word. The last chump who used it on me stuck up a filling station and killed a cop. Thanks for the bedtime story. The most I can give you is ten dollars. That's an advance on your pay. You got to remember I'm running a market, not a bank. Eddie, you can't work with your hands closed like that. Interesting card tonight. Look, McBride, I don't get this at all. I thought you'd like to see a kid named Eddie Quaid fight. Eddie? Your boy's trying to raise 25 bucks to spring you. I figured you ought to see the beating he's going to take for you. Boy, Ramazzotti. Shouldn't have done it. Good, though. Can I have a little water? <whistles> now get in there and throw everything you got at him. You got nothing to lose. All right, come on. Come on. It learns fast. for me to, to get out so I could uh, see you fight. Good fight, Eddie. I figured you'd take a beating. Thanks. Nice going, kid. Hello, Jim. Hi, Jerry. Here's your prize. A hawk shop across the street will give you 15 bucks for it. Why don't you save me the trip? I'd be afraid to walk in the dark with that kind of money. <laughs> Solid, wasn't it? He sure was. 
Thanks. Uh, can I talk to Pop for a minute? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, look, Pop. Why this this mess, this fighting in a bar? Huh? I had one drink too many. Said a couple of wrong words. That talk that we had to Walsh's. I don't know, Eddie. Remembering your mother, I got to thinking what a lousy loser I've been. What a lousy father. That I wasn't good enough. Good enough for what? You know. I'll tell you what I know. You should never be ashamed. My father taught me that. He taught me something else, Pop. There isn't anybody but you and me. You've told me that enough times. I had to learn it this way tonight. Nobody helps. Nobody's going to make you any presents. That leaves just us. Now, if you keep belting that bottle, you'll be running out on me. Don't do that, huh, Pop? I wouldn't want to break up the team. It's clothes on. We'll have a drink. My treat. I'll buy. Sure could use a fast one. Fast and soft. Yeah. You got suckered into those punches. It was... I uh, never told you I used to be a fighter myself before the kid was born. Packy Glennon, that was my ring name. Should have been canvas back. <laughs> you know something? He's better right now than I ever was. You cut it pretty good in there, Eddie. Pretty good. Why, well, he could he could be a great middleweight. Forget it, Pop. You're just dreaming. Guess I am. Pop, it's it's not for me. Isn't it? Well, where I stood, I saw magic. A kid who's a natural in the ring. You learn fast, Packy. You're bright. With the right trainer. What did you call me? Packy. You like that, huh? About time we had a winner in the family. Take a look, kid. Your old man's eyes. You notice the new light, the pride? Okay. Packy Glennon fights again. But his old man gives up the bottle. Who needs it? And another thing. Once I start this, I'm out for the whole ride and every dime I can squeeze out of it, okay? I'll stake you 500 bucks for it, kid. Might even find your trainer. You know, for a cop, you're very handy with the favors. I got no ideas about dying a cop, Sonny. I own a piece of a fish market over on Drew Street, and maybe I'll own a piece of you. That's my end, an investment. 500 bucks and a trainer, so I can rest my feet in the sunshine. Who's the trainer? A fellow named Bernie Brown. Never heard of him. What's he done? 10 years in San Quentin. Bring the library card. He works here. Hello, Benny. Good morning, Jim. Benny Brown, Pat Quaid, Eddie Quaid. Hi. Boy, I called you about. You ever hear of a saying, what you don't know won't hurt you? Sure. You believe it? Maybe. Yes or no? Yeah, I believe it. You're wrong. What you don't know can hurt you plenty. All right, so I'm wrong. Who are you fighting? I didn't say. What are you fighting? Uh, look, Bookworm, we're not connecting. Bookworm, that's a compliment. At that, I've done a lot of reading. Where? In the big house? What do you want, a diploma? Come. Real temper, too, huh? Let's go look the boy over. That's it. 
Thanks, You're in, Eddie. Call me Packy. Packy Glennon. Packy Glennon. All right, Packy. But before we make a deal, there's a couple of things you ought to know about me. I used to be a pretty cocky young fighter, too. Till one night I got drunk, slid my car over a white line. Smash two lives. Three, if you want to count mine. Well, what's the point? What's the point? Well, the point is this. If your boy wins, I won't cheer so loud. But if he loses, I'll be there to help him up. We're in business. Uh, legit? Legit. You hear that? That's your school bell. A first lesson, a story. A fairy tale. All about what might happen in the next three or four years. If God smiles on you. First off, we get you in shape. So if you had four legs, you could run in the Kentucky Derby. Then you start bouncing a rubber ball till you bounce like one yourself. You skip rope till you think you're becoming a schoolgirl. Then we go to work on fundamentals. Like learning to keep your elbows close to your body so you don't lose leverage. Like learning to make your punches come out short and sweet as money in the bank. You'll hit that heavy bag like you wanted to see the stuffing fly in your face. I'll teach you punches and combinations, so you'll have a good punch ready to follow your last punch. You'll climb into the ring, do some sparring, and you'll look like you learned all I taught you, and more. Then you'll have your first pro bout. And you'll look like you belong in a nursery instead of a ring. You'll get down on yourself. Your father will want to chuck it all for a bottle of whiskey. And then one night, God willing, you leave all your faults in your corner. And the stuff of champions will begin to show. The crowds will recognize it. The sport writers will mix metaphors about you. They'll compare you with the greatest. And you'll fight until every town and every month begin to look the same. And when you've got enough months piled up, maybe you'll be there. With the crowds touching you like you were holy. Like they knew you were born to be champion of the whole cockeyed world. All of Chicago's jumping. Biggest sink since Dempsey and Tunney. Probably break the record for the middleweight championship fight. Yeah, I hope so. Meanwhile, keep the newspaper boys away until after the fight, huh? Sure. Mm. Say, uh, how about tonight? You want me to decorate the place with some attractive lightweights? Yeah, bring on the girls. Get one for Pop, too. You won't. Okay. Hello. Who's calling, please? Uh, just a minute. Packy? Yeah? You want to speak to a Miss Walsh? Julie? Julie? Yeah. I'll talk. Just a minute, Miss Walsh. I mean, you gotta get some sleep, Packy. All right. Well, what are you doing in Chicago? Yes, I am surprised. It's been three years. Thanks, I'll need it tonight. Which reminds me, we're having a party after the fight. If we uh, win. Like I said, we're having a little party here after the fight tonight. You're invited. Okay, honey, we'll see you later. She talked like nothing ever happened. You still feel that way. Why'd you invite her? She belongs. She's a lightweight. The main event of the evening. 15 rounds of boxing for the world's middleweight championship. From San Francisco, wearing white trunks with black stripes, weighing 157, the sensational challenger, Packy Glennon! From Chicago, wearing black trunks with white stripes, weighing 159,
the middleweight champion of the world, Al Gorski. You boys have been instructed by the State Athletic Commission. The count of eight has been waived. Keep all your punches up. Shake hands now. Fight a clean fight.
Son, uh, you know Dan Selby, the Chronicle. Of course. Did I give you enough to write about tonight? Oh, you sure did. We were just discussing that third round. Good. What does my manager say? He says you can do it again and the return goes. <laughs> and we take home the big end of the purse. Well, it's a sure sellout. They ought to hold the next brawl on Pier 6. I thought I saw you praying at the end of the fight. Now, Bernie always prays for the loser. Mm, never for me. <laughs> Only the loser. See you later, boy. Okay. Well, well, well. Hello, Jack. Jackie. Lorraine Evans. Jackie Glennon. The new champ. Yes, I know. How do you do? Um, would you care for a drink? I'd love one. Would you excuse us? What would you like? Mm, scotch and water. A little scotch and water, too. Did you see the fight? Yes, I did. Here they are, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, I got uh, very lucky tonight. So did I. Hello, Al. Al Gorski. Oh, How are you, Al? Hello, Tim. Great fight, Al. Thanks. Hello, Hi, champ. Al. Well, coming from you, I guess it's official. No guessing about it. You belted me pretty good. <laughs> well, fellas, this is my wife, Mrs. Gorski. Hello. How do you do, Mrs. Gorski? Gorski? Won't you all have a drink with us? No, thank oh, you. Oh, we can only stay a minute. Uh, I'll have a short beer. We have to get home, you know. We've got four kids to explain this to. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta congratulate the Brain Trust. You got a great boy there. Oh, we think so. Take good care of him. You too, Al. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Peggy. You sure you won't have a drink? No, thanks. You know, I'd sleep a lot better, Mrs. Gorski, if he'd retire. <laughs> <laughs> I'll consider that when I win the title back. Thanks, Packy. Sure, pleasure. Good night. Thanks for stopping by. Good night, Packy. Good night. Good night. Next time, the party's on us. Right. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sorry, I can't stay longer. Well, are we the winners or aren't we? Let's have a party. Dad, look. How? <laughs> now, I bet you were going to say something interesting before they came in. I'm never interesting in crowd. Lorraine. Packy, a girl wants to see the champ. Uh, later, Pop. It's I Julie. Can't. I'll be back. Congratulations. Thanks. I saw the fight on television. Who are you rooting for? A oh, boy I used to know. Come on, I'll introduce you right Eddie, around. I'd like to talk to you. Julie, I'm giving a party. Please, I... Eddie. Um, did your, uh, did your parents move out of the old neighborhood? Yes, we moved. Eddie, you're, you're being awfully distant. What'd you expect? It's been three years. You think I'd welcome you with open arms? Seeing you again reminds me of that night in San Francisco. Please. Do you remember what your old man said? You quage, you're lousy with pride. What have you got to be proud of? Well, tell your old man to read the papers. The headlines are screaming and the quades are proud. You stop, All stop. Right, you've met the champ. Anything else? No. No, your speech just about covers it. Uh, Julie, you... Look, son. There's something that I should have... You know that building deal of Julie's father? He lost his shirt. Tough, Pop, tough. He went broke. He killed himself. Oh, my... Nothing but interruptions. You'd be surprised how much time I have. Julie, Julie, would you no, please Eddie. listen to me? I'm sorry. Don't apologize. I deserved it. Only I was stupid enough to think you might forgive and forget now that you're sitting on top of the world. Look, I'm sorry about your father. Why should you care? He damned your father for his weakness, forgetting that he had a weakness of his own. Julie, please listen. Look, Eddie, leave me alone. I, I've been alone for a long time, and I'm getting used to it. Don't talk like that, Julie. Don't I'm... make me take a cab. I can't afford it. Julie, will you please? I'll make it up to you somehow, Julie. Please, won't you listen? i am
Bernie. Always with the books, huh? What's the word? From the book, nothing. From me, even less. Come on, out with some wise words. Go to bed. I know. Join me in the night, Captain. The party's over. Too righteous to drink with me? The fight's over, too. That reminds me. I became the champ tonight. How loud did you cheer for me? Huh? How loud? A girl walked in here tonight. She led with her chin. And when you let her have it, I couldn't cheer. I prayed for you. Packing. You want a word? Uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. Time? Not nearly. Throw them harder. My arms feel like lead. So throw lead like a gun. That's enough. Not for Gorski. You know, you wouldn't change your tune if I had to fight an old man. It's hot, isn't it? Lindsay, why don't you go chase butterflies with Lorraine? I take my orders from the champ. You heard the man, Jack. Julie. Hi. Hello, Eddie. I figured maybe you'd like to say hello again. He's quite a talker, your father. He convinced me I needed fresh air. Did you bring a swimsuit? Yes. Come on, we'll go take a dip. Maybe we could steal a picnic basket, huh? <laughs> Excuse us. Okay. Don't mind me, I'm just getting him ready for a fight. This'll do him more good. Gorski will be glad to hear that. Packy, you've only got ten days. So I'm taking a couple hours off. You know how Gorski spends his nights? He runs the fight pictures over and over. And when he goes to bed, he fights you. Who wins? Kid, when it comes for real, he's liable to murder you. Look, Bernie, this girl. When I shot my mouth off at her, you bawled me out, right? Now I want to make it up and you're still screaming. What do you want from me? Everything you've got and more. You know, Bernie, you're the lousiest looking blues singer I ever saw. Do champions pick flowers? Well, us champs, we're the nicest people in the world. We're the only ones that can afford to. <laughs> what haven't we talked about? You and me. I missed you. Lonely in Chicago? Very. I don't see why. A beautiful girl like you. You know, you ought to stand on windy street corners. Whew, speaking of wind, it's a little chilly. Thank you. All of a sudden, I remember the way you used to tease me. Are you still like that, Julie? I've grown up. What are you reading now? Ooh, 
Writings from the Talmud. What's it about? Truth, wisdom. It was written a long time ago. Is there anything in it for a guy that still got a lot to learn? For the both of us, maybe. Here's something. When a man learns to subdue anger, he finds it easier to conquer all other foes. Good night, Bernie. Good night, Peggy. Got him, Packy. Yeah, maybe he's finished. Forget it, there's another round coming up. That's it. Beat it, Tommy. He's all right. What's the round? Three coming up. I'm all right. Yeah, he come out of all right. He's all right.
across that eye, all right? First time. This time it hurts. <laughs> what punch did the trick? I guess that left hook to the body. Lucky punch. Lucky all around tonight. Hi, Hi Packy. Hi, Packy. Hi, boy. Congratulations, champ. Thanks, Packy. I was just telling the boys how lucky I was. Sure, some lucky, huh? How do you feel about Dylan stopping the fight? Uh, the champ stopped me, not Dylan. You don't think Dylan stopped it too soon? I didn't come here to alibi. I lost and it's over, that's all. You gonna give Packy another fight? If the bell hadn't saved me, you'd be asking Packy that same question. Sure, he gets another shot. In San Francisco? Chicago next spring. Okay? Yeah, it's okay with us. We're having a shindig at my house tonight. Real Polish ham and lots of beer. I'd like you to come. No, thanks. I think I've seen enough of you for one night. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night, Al. Good night. Good, night. Good, night. Good luck. Good Did great. Just great. Sure, some great. I lost. Not in Gorski's dressing room, you didn't. You won something else in there. Respect. He had it in him. He could have finished, Gorski. You're crazy. Gorski would have killed him. Wait a minute, Bernie. Pop's right. What? Dylan had no business stopping the fight. Unless there was monkey business. Oh, sure. Gorski put the fix on Dylan. He needed it. He needed something when that bell rang. All right, so it was legit, but another five seconds and I would have been... You dead. might have been dead. You don't know how you looked. You don't know how you stood there just begging for the meat axe, not even remembering how to roll with a punch. Wait a minute. He's my son. You think I'd say he could have fought if it wasn't so? You've got him alive and well. Be satisfied. All right, Pop, take him off. Poor Eddie. Poor face. Well, what do you think of the fight business now? Pretty awful. You'll get used to it. Maybe. I made some sandwiches. We can have a party. But there must be something we can celebrate. No. Not tonight. I think I better go. Julie? These uh, last few weeks, you know, seeing each other, I found out something. I want us to be together all the time. Oh, I do too. But, well, not tonight. Do you understand?
now. Should I come in? Well, sure, Tommy. Come on in. Have some coffee? I already had breakfast. Well, sit down. Sit down. Did you see Dan Selby's column this morning? No. He says you boys don't want me in there tomorrow night. He says you're going to blackball me with the commission. Why, that's not true. Packy, tell him. Selby had it right. I'm sorry, Tom. I didn't know. My partners forgot to tell me. Easy, Bernie, easy. Let the man talk. I didn't come here to beg. I just want to get a few things straight. Did you think I was juiced to steal that bike from you? No. Then what do you got against me? Nothing. You sorry I didn't let Gorski kill you? We're sorry you stopped the fight, period. I'd do it again. Not to me, you won't. Oh, you big shot. I was a champ when you were playing with marbles. Think I'm going to let you blast my reputation? I wouldn't want that, Tom. You want the job? What's the angle? Just one way you stop the fight. You count to ten, that's all. No. It's my skin. It's my conscience. Dylan. All right, all right, I give in. Now you got to give a little. All I want you to do is think. That's all. Just think twice before you stop the fight. Just think twice. I'll see you in the ring. There you go. The commission assigns me. Okay, Bernie. You can turn it off. Packy just gave in, didn't he? No. No, Dylan gave in. A referee can't think twice. If he does, that ring turns into a square jungle. What's so special about that? You think it's any different out there, outside the ring? You think they're going to give you favors and pat you on the back because you're a loser? I'm a fighter. And as long as I'm on my feet, I'll fight. Meeting for the third time, those two great fighters in this corner from San Francisco, wearing white trunks, weighing 157 pounds, the challenger, Packy Glennon. <laughs> And in this corner, from Chicago, wearing black trunks, weighing 158 and one half pounds, the middleweight champion of the world, Al Gorski. Your referee is Tommy Dillon. Now you boys know the rules of the Illinois Boxing Commission. Tonight, I want another good, clean fight. I want you to keep all your punches up. I want you to keep punching in the clinches until I say break. But when I say break, I want you both to take one step back. I shake hands now and come out fighting with the belt. Go get him. Murder on, Jeff! On the button, Al!
Slow down. Pick your shots. What are you in such a hurry for? Take it easy. Clinton's faster and smarter than he's ever been. Don't let him get set. You ever see a good one? Okay, Packy, what round's coming up? It's the last round. What round? The fourth round, Chicago Stadium, Chicago, Illinois, USA. Any other questions? All right, all right. You got anything left? Huh? Well, then stay away from him. All right. Box him, you know? Make him press. Make him go. And then pick your spot. All right?
Call an ambulance. The time, 57 seconds of the fourth round. The winner and new middleweight champion of the world, Packy Glennon. You killed him. Why didn't you stop it? What did you wait for? What about it, Dylan? That's Packy Glennon. He wanted me to think twice before I stopped the fight. Okay, Packy. Thoughts. Call him McGonagall. Where are you going? To look for a job. Eddie. Oh, Eddie. Come on. You can see him at the apartment. Forget. He's not dead. Give him time. Shut up, Bernie. You got Tommy Dillon to think twice. And now you'll have the rest of your life to remember it. Only you'll wish it had been you instead of Al Gorski. Nice going, champ. How does a thing like this happen? Well, look, you... You won it fair, didn't you? You didn't ask anything for yourself. That, that, that dumb Dylan... Come in. We'll leave a guard here, Mr. Glennon, just in case anybody tries to make trouble. Uh, how... How is he? He's on the ropes. Doc says it's a toss-up. We'll explain it. You didn't ask Dylan for a license to kill Gorski. So... So we got nothing to worry about. You're the champ. The best, that's all. Whatever they say that the two of us, we can lick them. You're full of hot air, Pop. You've talked like you've always talked. Words will fix a charm. Make them whistle a merry tune. Talking as if it was my no, fault. No, it... it was my fault. Because I listened. Do you remember? I used to sit on the front step and I listened when you told me there were just the two of us. Us against the world. Well, we sure fought them great, didn't we? Eddie, you didn't do wrong, I'm telling you. I... Pop, Pop, he's dying! He's dying, Pop! Don't you understand? He's another human being with a wife and children. And I did it to him. Me, your son. Because I wanted the title. <laughs> well? You haven't got a winner in the family anymore. Eddie, you'll make it right. Sure, sure, hold on tight. So you can be a big man again. So you can pass out cigars and talk to the press. McBride had his 10% and Brown was out saving souls and this was your end. Being a big man. Well, Pop, the play's all over. 
Everything's back to zero. Get me out of here. Where that cab goes, I want to go. Where to? I said, where do you want to go, Mr. Champion? Anywhere. Anywhere I can keep my eyes closed. Do I owe you? Nothing. Don't even thank me. You should have caught it. Here, try this one. I might as well not be here. What makes you think you are? Touche. French word means don't hit me when I'm down. Mark Eldridge, I'm with the Globe. Aren't you Packy Glennon? Who's Packy Glennon? Gorski's dying. Who's Gorski? Pictures plastered over every front page. Plastered, that's a secret word. Come on, Packy, how about a story? <laughs> Don't call me Packy. My name's not Packy. You make me believe I'm Packy and I break your Honey, honey, please. Come on, we'll go. I'm Eddie Quaid, that's who I am. Where is he? Room 22. Party over? Party. It was awake. We buried Packy Glennon or Eddie Quaid. I don't know, somebody. Peggy? Peggy? Packy! My name's not Packy. All right, Eddie. 
Come on. My name is... Sit up. My up you go. Is... Up you go. Sit up. It's Jim. McBride. McBride. Good old 10% McBride. Here's your cut. No, no. You're all through with that? That's pretty funny. Why are you afraid I'm not gonna be in shape for my next fight? Now, come on, get dressed. We're going back to San Francisco. No, I can't, I can't. Leave me alone. No, I've got 10% of that pain in your gut. Jim, wait downstairs. Pop. Go on. He's through with the ring. He's not dead. No. He's not dead. Look, Eddie. Eddie, we've got some money put aside, and I was thinking that maybe we'd go in the trucking business. No, Where's it? No, no. Go on home. Go on home with your pride. Eddie, Eddie, you, your son, you're, you're young. You'll have to face the world. People forget. No. No, you can't. I can't. I won't and I can't. Go on home, Pop. Go on home. I'm not gonna see you throw your life away, no! You, you, you've got years. And Julie. What, what about Julie? Get she, out of here, she, Pop. Will you get out of here and leave me alone? I thought you were in Chicago. I got homesick. Oh, my, you're so fresh. Let's walk. Your father says you come here every day. No crowds. Lots of nothing. You ever see anybody? Well, Pop, McBride once in a while. And Bernie Brown. He kissed me off. Eddie, what are you going to do? Any suggestions? A fact to begin with. I love you. I was another guy. No, Eddie. It's no use, Julie. Something was cut out of me that night with Gorski. Then let it heal. Your father, McBride, everybody wants to help you. But you don't want to be helped. Well, I'm not even going to try. Well, let's leave it, huh? Sure, leave it. Dig the hole deeper so you can hide yourself better with your guilt for a shroud. Look, Eddie, it's this simple. I can take what you did to Gorski because I know how much you regret it. But, Eddie, what you're doing to yourself, that I can't take. I can't even pity you. Papers? Al Gorski leaves the hospital. Good news. 
Not gonna ask about Packy? What's there to ask? I read the papers. He vacated his title and the commission cleared him. He gave his end of the gate to Gorski, so that makes him a public benefactor. He's sick, Bernie. He's all locked up inside. I've got him back, but I... I can't reach him. Maybe you could talk to him. You know how a man can live with himself. There's nothing I've got to say. You, you and your lousy books. You're a fake, Bernie. You don't stand behind your high-sounding words. You remember the, the first day in the Market Street gym, the first day we met? You said, if your boy loses, I'll be there to help him up. Well, Packy's a loser. He's a big loser. What's happened to you, Bernie? When did you stop saying prayers for losers? Pat, you want Packy to fight again? No, he's had it. I've been talking to him about going in the trucking business. It's something that I know a little something about, and it's something that Packy can learn. If he learns to care again, why don't you talk to him? Maybe you can reach him. I'm leaving town on business tonight. Personal business. This Dawson McFadden fight, a week from Friday. Take Packy to see that. The fights? You couldn't get him within a mile of a fight arena. You get some ringside seats and see that he gets there, understand? I'll try. Thanks, Bernie. This isn't the way where we're going. We're going to the fights. Well, whose bright idea is this? Mine. Please, Eddie, it's for your sake. Go on without me. Eddie, huh? there's no place else to go. Now, what have you got to lose? Just forget about me, right? Just forget about me. Eddie, this is as far as we can take you. Now it's up to you. You can walk, or you can run, or you can rot. Give him his ticket. before I stop the fight. Okay, Packy, I thought. He's here. Let me see you check it.
Introducing one of boxing's all-time greats, the former heavyweight champion of the world, the Brown Bomber, Joe Lewis. <laughs> a great fighter, Al Gorski. Thanks a lot. I'd like to tell you why I'm here. A man came to see me in Chicago the other day. His name is Bernie Brown, a great trainer. And he said to me, Al, the doc says you're going to be OK now. And I said, sure, but that was some beating I took. And he said, yeah, but you should see the other guy. He's not up yet. And maybe he'll never get up. That other guy, in case you don't know, he's Packy Glennon. <laughs> Jackie and me, we fought three times. Some sport writers said there were the three of the greatest fights of all time. Maybe, maybe not. All I know is this. Packy and me, we never learned how to waltz. You tell him, Packy. I'll mention someone. I'll mention someone called Bernie Brown. He's a great man. He told me something from, from, from a holy book. It was called a Talmud. It said like this. A child comes into the world with his hands clenched, wanting everything. And a man leaves it with his hands wide open, wanting nothing. Like Al said, we were in the ring together three times with our hands clenched. And now, 
We're going to leave it for all time with our hands wide open.